with your 30 years of experience, do you have like a special recipe when it comes to sparking a purpose? Is that something that you that you grow? Is that something that you find? Is that something that you build? So what I'm most known for is my happiness formula. And I'm so glad that you struck upon the word purpose because my happiness formula is very, very simple. It's P plus P equals H. Purpose plus progress equals happiness. Mm. So there's two kinds of happiness. There's hedonic happiness, which is the happiness you get from imbibing or spending a lot of money on clothes or shopping or whatever. And then there's eudaimonic happiness. Now that's the sustainable happiness, right? And that's the happiness you get from doing good to others. Mm -hmm. You know, a thousand years ago, St. Augustine said, it is in giving that we receive. Mm -hmm. Right. If you've ever bought somebody that you really loved a wonderful present, you get giddy inside. You can't wait for them to open it compared to when you receive a present. It doesn't really feel all that good. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's quite the opposite. So what I encourage people is in their words and in their deeds, but especially in their words, because words are free to be encouraging to other people, to be kind. So what I did about a decade ago is I said, you know what? People speak equals H. How can I make this powerful in my life? And what I'd like everybody to do right now is to take out either their phone to write this down or a piece of paper. And what I'd like you to do in one column under purpose Write down the purposes of your life. So for me, you know, my wife woke me up at 4.30 last night in the morning. She says, you've got to take me to the emergency room, right? And uh, what happened was she's allergic to any kind of nail pro uh, products, um, whether it's nail polish. And we went to a party on Saturday night, and she thought maybe by putting press-on nails, it would be different than putting, you know, regular nail polish on. And she woke up last night and her face was so swollen shut, you know. But the thing is, the, one of the greatest purposes of my life is to be a great husband to my wife, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you write down, well, what steps can you take, right? And I would do anything for my wife. I'm very blessed that I found my soulmate. But one of the things that I did was with young kids, I realized a long time ago, it was much cheaper to hire a babysitter than it is a divorce attorney, <laughs> right? So every Saturday night was date night. Mm -hmm. I love being with my wife, right? And it's very important when you're married to have that alone time. Oh, yeah. So I have a, well, I used to, because my daughter's 16 now, I had a stable of babysitters. So if one dropped off at the last minute, I would have somebody else to replace, not a problem. Mm -hmm. And I would say to Shannon, what movie do you want to go to? What restaurant do you want to go to? You see, when you're in marriage, you become one. And you don't want to hurt the other person because if you hurt the other person by putting them down, saying things that are negative, you're really hurting yourself. Now, who wants to punch themselves in the face? Right? Why would you ever want to hurt yourself? This person has agreed to be with you for the rest of your life. Treat them special. Treat them with kindness. Right. So that was my first purpose. Mm -hmm. My second purpose, to be a great father to my two children. And under progress, I wrote, coach them in every sport they ever do. Now, I don't like every sport. I don't like soccer. OK, but there I am running around with a whistle, right, with, with children in a, in a blob. If you've ever seen a children's soccer <laughs> game, it's just a blob chasing a ball, right? There is no, you can try to be strategic. It's not going to work, right? But I did it anyway. And then, you know, one of the other things is be a great financial advisor to my clients, mm -hmm. right? And then under progress, make relationships with the greatest thought uh, leaders on Wall Street. So if things come up, you've got somebody to call to get great answers to where to position the portfolios. So all of us have those steps. And 
Benjamin Franklin said that 1% of the population is successful because only 1% writes down their goals. Mm. So write down your goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Richard Branson says too. Like it's one of his more popular calls or quotes from one of his conference calls with Tony Robbins. And he was like, the difference between um, myself as a billionaire and everybody else is that I write down my dreams. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's almost something metaphysical that happens when you bring an idea into like the third dimension by writing it down. And it's going to sound a little esoteric, but I mean, Richard Brand, it works for Richard Branson, it works for Benjamin Franklin, so it can work for you too, right? And I mean, journaling in, in general is just a cathartic practice. So it's a good way to get any of like the thoughts that are ruminating out onto paper. And then it's like you can dump them and leave them there instead of having them follow you throughout the rest of the day. Mm-hmm.